The only thing we have to fear is beer itself. Beer. So many choices. Oh, we no function beer well without. Woohoo! Beer! <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Busters. We're going to bring the news and reviews of your favorite brews. I am Dan Baker. I am joined by my co-host and brewologist. Steph Hafner. And of course, the demented and fermented. Wayne Baker. No longer socially distancing and is sitting right next to me. I'm back physically next to Dan for this episode. Yes. After my brief uh, post-vacation quarantine last last time. Yeah. Well, thank you again for uh, for doing that so I can try to be safe and avoid the Rona. Well, we have a, a lot of cool stuff that we are going to get to tonight. And, uh, you know, I said it before and I'll say it again. The silver lining of having to go remote for everything is that we are able to talk to people at breweries that we would not have been able to otherwise. And yes, Pennsylvania is in some ways a small state, in some ways a very large state. But there's parts of it that we can't get to realistically with all this equipment. But that is saved by the Internet. So Internet. The Internet? The Internet. internet? What, is, what is the Internet? Jesus Christ. <laughs> And we're off. Uh, I'm more worried about the outer nuts, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we have joining us all the way from New Trail Brewing Company, we have... Mike LaRosa. Ooh, Mike, thank you for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, of course, of course. Um, I, I, you, you guys have set the Pennsylvania beer community on fire, basically, in, in recent years. All the all the the people that want or to, recent year. Well, recent year. So I, I, you know, this entire year has felt like six years in and of it itself. Has. That's true. Time it doesn't mean has. anything anymore. It certainly yeah. does. Um, but yeah, you know, there's you guys have a, a very hefty reputation that you that you live up to continuously, and that and that's great. And uh, and I'm excited to dive into that in a, in a couple of minutes. For sure. Yeah. Uh, well, first and foremost, housekeeping wise, remember you out there listening to this, you can follow along with the shenanigans at Beer Busters on the Twitter and the Instagram. Facebook, we are Beer Busters Podcast. Don't forget Patreon.com slash Beer Busters, where you can find your way into Last Call and get some extra bonus content like all the cool kids do. And of course, there's Beer Busters Podcast.com, specifically slash shop. Yeah, don't forget the slash shop part. Is, uh, Go buy things. Arguably the most important, and uh, and that includes masks. You can get yourself a mask. Yeah, a couple of masks. I should do some more mask designs. I feel like uh, I feel like I could come up with some more popular sellers. You should do um, the the COVID virus thing, but have like tasting glasses spitting off of it. I'm not sure how I feel about that idea. I'll have to, I'll have to sleep <laughs> we'll, on that. We'll I'll sleep on that, Dan. We'll workshop. We'll workshop that. I don't know. That's either really clever or kind of problematic i'm not sure hey, a, little, a little bit of column a a little bit of column b and we're yeah good. i mean you know it, people click on it i'm sure that is true it's all about those clicks yep uh i mean that's all i got for housekeeping wise you know what i want i want a beer i a feel beer. Like i already opened one what did you open what do you think i opened i don't know uh water wings of the course pilsner. the pilsner well i feel like um, we're we well, might... it's one of it's one of a few pilsners that we've had so <laughs> mm-hmm. It's yes, yes, and and we will drink all the pilsners, but we, that's the one we have right now. I did um start, I, I kind of started out ahead uh, pre gaming, as the kids say, with the Oktoberfest from Funk, just because I didn't know how quickly we were going to open a new trail beer. But if you guys want to dive right into a pilsner, Absolutely. I'm happy to do it. I'll dig it out of the bag. Please do. I pre I pre gamed with a Hellas from Beerstadt. <laughs> Still I was haven't... like, this is probably a bad idea because I have two triples and Oof. an Imperial Porter, but I still haven't cracked open any of the Beerstadt beers. I mean, is anything really wrong? The wrong idea from Beer Stop, So that's true. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so we are we are going to crack open uh, the water wings on our end too. Now I want to get into a little bit of new trailer, uh, uh, the story of the brewery itself. So uh, as we've already said, I misspoke. It's not years, even though this year feels like forever. But you guys have only been open for about a year, right? No, it's actually been about two and a half. We Damn it, Steph! In... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, we opened in April of 18. Is that right? Is that two and a half years ago? Oh, was that two yeah. and a half years ago already? Yeah, but holy shit. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't seem like it's been that long. I don't know. It's just like time is relative, I guess, like we yeah. said. And Corona adds an extra 10 years to our lives. That's so. true. Uh, yeah, so we opened in April of 18. Um, we had started producing wort in January of 18. And... We had started with a pretty traditional model. Uh, we started brewing like a Pilsner, an Amber Ale, White Ale, an American IPA, and a hazy IPA that um, we were going to produce like every once in a while. It's called Broken Heels. And things shifted for us pretty quickly uh, when Broken Heels took off. So we started producing 
a fair amount of hazy IPA probably that August. So in 2018, we produced 2,500 barrels um, from April through January or December. And then uh, in 2019, we produced about 7,000 barrels. And in 2020, we're going to produce 15,000 barrels, but that's at a pace of 25 to 30,000 barrels. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So growth has been exponential here. Yeah, um, really kicked and, off early on. I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, doing the hazy IPA early on that really uh, kind of put you guys on the map. And I know on the internet, specifically in the breweries and PA group, anybody who follows that group knows that they are uh, massive neutral fans. But uh, I think you guys really made a splash on the internet early on. Everybody was talking yeah, about your beers. For sure. So, I mean, like the, you know, the whole idea behind uh, neutral and our distribution model has been to um, provide beer to everybody, you know, to kind of absolve line culture and move towards, you know, reasonably priced beer that you can find at just about any um, distributor, grocery store, restaurant, wherever. And um, we didn't know how it was going to go and it's going well. You know, people, people are into that idea. What is your current uh, distribution range? We're just inside of the state of Pennsylvania. So we, um, we'd started with um, distributing to um, our local market, which was about 10 counties. And then we opened up State College. So that was like an extra two or three counties. And Philadelphia opened up around the same time. And then we opened Erie. And then I want to say Scranton, then Harrisburg. And then Pittsburgh just opened up maybe six months ago. Nice. I remember when you guys just started distributing to Reading, um, there was an event at the Bar Limo that I went yeah, to for sure. uh, and Don was there, but that was uh, exciting for us in this area once we could start getting our hands on the, the kegs and the cans. And uh, th- since quarantine, the beginning of quarantine, Bar Limo had a crap ton of your kegs and I remember they did a whole new trail crawler night. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and my myself and a few of my friends, uh, we went just to get a bunch of neutral crawlers to go to stock the fridge for a uh, quarantine. Yeah, yeah, the barley mo is a great account. Um, you know, Don does a great job, and so do all of our reps that are in all the areas. But <clears throat> Don did a a great job setting up Reading. I mean, obviously, Donnie and I spent a lot of time in Reading, so we sort of have a soft spot for it and try to treat it pretty well. We're, we're happy to accept yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So let's, I know that you brew several lagers, uh, which is how uh, New Trail took my heart, but this is one of the, the newer lagers that you guys are doing, right? I know it's the first time yes. I've had it. Yeah. So Water Wings was released maybe about a month ago. When is it? It's uh, October. So we released it, I think, in the first week of September. Um, it is an American style Pilsner. It's brewed with, um, primarily, uh, Weirman, uh, German Pilsner malt. It's hopped with German spalt and American Cascade. Uh, it's also dry hopped with Cascade. So it provides like a really nice, crisp, um, bready backbone, but also has that nice, um, orange citrus kind of aroma with it, with still providing like that noble bitterness mm-hmm. yeah i was going to say the first thing that struck me was the the hop character now pilsners are generally on the hoppier side uh, of lagers anyway um but definitely that that sort of american style pilsner you really get out of this because it gets it hits those those uh those hop notes those those late edition and dry hop notes that that we For Americans sure. love in our beers but still has that nice clean lager uh start to it it's, it's really nice yeah i absolutely. get the i get the cascade when i burp <laughs> <laughs> that's where it I'm is I'm literally burping up Cascade I'm like oh yeah there's definitely Cascade yeah yeah absolutely yeah Cascade's kind of like the you know redheaded stepchild anymore of American hops like nobody really likes to talk about it but it still provides really cool um, cool hop flavor you know it, it's like for us that have been drinking beer for a few years and remember when IPAs were primarily Cascade I kind of wanted to make a, a beer that kind of I could drink all the time, but still remember what Cascade tasted like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about the can art for a moment? <laughs> yeah. So, so originally, it was Donnie that I believe that came up with the name Waterways. 
we were talking about um, like a summer IPA. We were just like, you know, shooting the shit and trying to come up with ideas. This is probably like early spring. And he, and he goes, what about a beer named Water Wings? And we put a fat kid on the label who's got like ice cream dripping down his hands and he's got water wings on. And I was like, I love that idea. <laughs> it's like, so, it's so off brand for us, but uh, like, I, I really love that idea. We're going to make it happen. And I was like, but my caveat is, is that it has to be a pilsner. <laughs> so, um, there's we, a bit we, of irony in that though. Usually the, the silly beer names and the silly can art. Yeah. You usually for, assume it's going to be the hazy it's IPA. Be an hazy IPA or like yeah. milkshakes or whatever. No, it's right. sort of, I, that was sort of the, the joke of it all was that it was supposed to like be something that you know you and me and everybody else that likes beer like, like yeah. to drink <laughs> beer flavored beer right yeah beer flavor and that's what you so like lazy river pilsner um the our core pilsner that's my tagline on that beer is that it's just like beer flavored beer like it, it yeah. tastes like the way that i want beer to taste yeah, Lazy River Pills is a, a fantastic beer. I've had that many, many times. Now, that's a beer that you guys always brew. Is the Water Wings, is this just like a once and done beer or will no, this come water, back? Water Wings will come back next year at some point. We Everybody at the brewery like to drink it. So so are we allowed to call it a seasonal? Are we still allowed to use uh, that word? I mean, it, if you can say core is an okay word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, could start, we could just start calling them Fair occasionals. Enough. That way there's no, yeah. pressure. Occas- there's no pressure. Occasional is a good word for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, you know, when it becomes water wing season again. We'll <laughs> yeah, there so. you go. Wait, didn't you release yeah, it the I first was say that. in September? When we started this conversation <laughs> right, and you all said, right, all right, all right, all right. you said we released this beer a month ago and I'm looking at the can and I'm like, this is a summer. Well, you scene. know, if it was beginning of September, it's just in time for, you know, Labor Day. Yeah. Well, it, kind, so here, it makes it even better, though. So here, here's the deal, guys. Like when you brew Pilsner, it's supposed to <laughs> it's, sit and wait and a while, wait yeah. a long time. So when I brewed it, it was water wing season. That's what we were drinking. It wasn't necessarily That's water fair. Wing. That's fair. So this no, is like the yeah. opposite of the pumpkin beer release schedule. It comes out yeah, months yeah, exactly. after that. I'm going to start releasing summer beers in December. So I can just get ahead of the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> then you can release a Baltic Porter in the summer. I would love to make a Baltic Porter in the summer. I would love that. I was, I ha- I was kind of rereading your bio a little bit because I've known you for a while. So I know a lot about your brewing history. But yeah, for sure. I never knew that you started as an intern at um, the King of Prussia Rock Bottom location. Rest in I peace. I think that's actually where we where we met yeah not necessarily at rock bottom but when i was working there right you and you were i believe the assistant brewer at that mm-hmm. time that's correct yeah. and i also read that the first beer that you brewed alone there was the baltic porter mm-hmm. and that's the one that went on to win the gabf medal yep that's correct i mean that's a pretty badass way to start brewing professionally yeah, yeah. So um, I started with Brian at the Rock Bottom. He, he now owns the the Sterling Pig in Media. Uh, and if you haven't had their beer, you should. It's fantastic. It's a great place. Mm-hmm. Um, I started with Brian like as an intern, just begging him to let me come and hang out and like mop the floors and do whatever. And I eventually bullied him into offering me a job. <laughs> so, so I spent about two years with Brian, and he um, he really taught me a lot. He is an extremely well versed classical brewer. He can pretty much brew anything um, classical in its nature by its style. And at the time, this would have been 2013. He and I were talking about dark lager because he's probably one of the most award-winning dark lager brewers in the country he has like five or eight somewhere in that range uh medals at gabf and world beer cup for uh baltic porter and schwartz beer and we were gonna brew this baltic porter and i was like well this is the first beer i'm ever gonna get to brew blah blah blah. i really wanted to submit it to gabf just to see what they have to say and yada 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 he's like yeah yeah sure kid whatever (laughs) And, and and lo and behold we won that year so it was kind of cool. Who has that medal? 
so I believe he has the medal that we received in Denver. However, I ordered myself one because oh, nice. I, I couldn't. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Can you do? I never. I, I, can you do that if you've already won a medal? Can you ask for another one or a replacement? Yeah, absolutely. So like when when we won for uh, Lazy River last year uh, for a Contemporary American Pilsner, I got a whole bunch of medals for the staff here. Oh, cool. That's cool. that's cool. I think. Yeah, I think that's just like the right thing to do. I wonder, can you do that with Olympic um, medals? Can you be like, can I get a? <laughs> can I get another? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I I lost that one. Yeah. Can I... I guess if you're willing to pay for it. Yeah, well, the thing is, though, the I, I think the upshot of that is, like, if you could do that, you could sell your yeah on, like, eBay. Could you imagine if somebody would pay that. for, like, yeah. an authentic Olympic medal yeah. on eBay? Yeah, and I, I mean, traded my gold medal for a car. Now I need another one. Yeah. Hey, Olympic Committee, can I get another medal? I wonder what the going rate for JBF medals is. Probably, like, $10? <laughs> yeah, probably, probably not. <laughs> I think it probably depends on the category. Yeah. yeah, right. That's true. Yeah, it probably very much depends on the category. Yeah. Well, a lot has happened in your personal brewing career from that first GABF medal to the one that you guys just won last year. Do you want to just very quickly run down the impressive list of places that you've brewed I will at? Mo- I will modestly talk about my career, and then you can, you can probe me if that's, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> so, so, um, so I started at the, the Rock Bottom in King of Prussia, and I worked with Brian for about two years. Um, we won the medal at GABF in 2013. And then I left there. I was in college at the time. I was working almost full time with Brian um, while going to school at Albright for environmental studies, business, and sociology. Um, Rock Bottom couldn't offer me a full time job at the time, so I was looking for a full time brewing job. And I landed the head brewer job at Saucony Creek in Kutztown. And I was with them for about a year. I was their first brewer that actually brewed on the system. Um, Joe Prococo was the first brewer for them, um, mm-hmm. and he helped them build everything out. And he, he did a good job, but never uh, made it to actually producing work on the system. So uh, I worked with them for about a year. Um, I brewed a lot of their original beers and came up with some of their original beers, like Maple Mistress is my recipe. Um, I was with them when we were developing Saucony, or, uh, uh, Stonefly. Stonefly was the oh, IPA, yeah. mm-hmm. and shit, what was that double honey with the um, hops that have the wrestling guys on it? Oh shit! Hop suplex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say yeah, hop yeah, yeah, slam, yeah. and I knew that was wrong. Yeah. Hop yeah. Suplex. No, no, no. It was kind of modeled after hop slam. Yeah. That was when I was really popular. Um, so I worked with them through that period. We produced. I don't know, maybe 1,000 or 1,500 barrels that year. And I left them to go to Maniunk. And I worked with Maniunk for a short stint. I sort of took it as a, a short-term gig. Um, the brewer at the time was leaving to go to back to Iron Hill. He had been an Iron Hill brewer and then worked uh, with Maniunk for a few years, and then he wanted to go back to Iron Hill. And Evan Fritz who I'm sure you guys know, Evan Mm -hmm. wanted to kind of be the head brewer. So I came in and and helped them build the system out. And Evan was the assistant brewer at the time and also the sales guy. And he was kind of looking to transition. So I I helped with the build-out phase and then um, moved on. And I worked with Kane Brewing Company on the Jersey Shore. I was the head brewer there. I worked with them for a little over a year. Um, And that was a really interesting time for Kane. We were at the time producing about 2,000 barrels a year and uh, head high and overhead were sort of just starting to uh, make their way around the state. And we were developing beers. Um, a night to end all dawns had just um, won the gold medal that year. And we were, he was sort of picking up traction as like a dark beer brewer. And we focused on um, beers like Sunday brunch which is my recipe. And um, I worked with him for about a year, helping move him from about 2,000 barrels a year to 5,000 barrels a year. I was headhunted from there to open the fermenteria at Tired Hands. Mm-hmm. And I helped with the build out phase at Tired Hands and um, brought him from, it was a production capacity of about two to 3,000 barrels a year to about 10,000 barrels a year 
and we did that in about two years, and that was when all the craziness was happening down there. The canning line got installed. We built the third facility. Uh, we were just adding tanks, fooders, barrels all the time. Um, the ceramic egg. You know, that's a funny story. Is but that yeah, where yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Gene said to me one day, he's like, "So um, we've got this uh, this cement egg showing up." And I was like, cool, what's a cement egg? He's like, we're gonna ferm- <laughs> we're, we're gonna ferment beer in it. And I was like, cool. He's like, yeah, all the all the vinters in California are doing it for their their white wines. I was like, all right, cool. When's it showing up? He's like, uh, like three days from now. It's been branded and it has our logo on it. I was like, yeah, that would have been nice to know about. I was like, how much does it weigh? He's like, huh. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> it's pretty substantial in size, and it's made of concrete. So. <laughs> yeah, so so this egg, this concrete egg fermenter shows up. It's in the back of an eighteen wheeler. We don't have a loading dock at the fermenteria, and um, it weighs like I don't remember. It's like five thousand pounds or six thousand pounds, and the forklift yeah. was three thousand pounds. So I rented a forklift that was like just the weight capacity that could pull the egg off of that that trailer. <laughs> And we get the egg. I drag the egg with the forklift with straps from the back of the of the truck all the way to the front, so I can pick it with the with the the actual forks. And I'm pulling it off with the forks, and the back of my forklift starts lifting <laughs> off the, the ground. ground. And I'm oh like, I was like, oh no. So I, so I put it down on the truck. I was like, go find the biggest dudes you can find in the restaurant right now. <laughs> and we pulled like three guys that we knew that were in the restaurant at the time. And they're like hanging off the back of the forklift as I'm lifting this egg off the, oh off the back of the back of the truck. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. I mean, obviously it made it inside the yeah. building, but unscathed. Um, unscathed yeah but it was that was a that was a fun day i'm hoping that one of two things are the case either one that uh the statute of limitations has passed and two nobody who works for osha listens to this podcast (laughs) (laughs) yeah i just assume that nobody that works for osha probably not (laughs) uh yes so i I left tired hands after getting them to about ten thousand barrels a year i started the consulting company uh focusing on startup breweries and um I uh, did that for about two years, and in that two years, I helped start New Trail. They were one of my first um, clients, and as I was working with New Trail, my partners asked me, like, is this something you want to do? Do you want to be a part of this team? Do you want to be a partner? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I believe in this. Let's do this. Very cool. Uh, awesome. Yeah. That's so that's a pretty impressive resume, just the names uh, of breweries that are on that list, but also because... Uh, in a lot of these stories, like you really seem to have a hand at your skill seems to be ex- like growing quickly, like being able to, to, uh, uh, take a brewery to the next level. Like, it, do you, is that like a, I mean, you're not really involved in marketing. You're just really brewing. So, how well, do you no, actually, it? actually I'm pretty, uh, for new trail, I'm pretty involved in everything. Okay. So I run, uh, I run our production team. I run our social media currently. I'm hoping to pawn that off onto somebody. I do some of our graphic design work, but I, I really manage everything um, at New Trail that has to do with production, tasting room, uh, marketing, social media, and um, odds and ends. My uh, my business partners handle uh, sales, and my other business partner handles finances. And then we sort of just all meddle in each other's day to day, you know, to kind of create checks and balances and help each other out. So I have to ask, uh, when you were at Rock Bottom, did you make the root beer by any chance? No. no okay. I believe, the root, I believe the root beer came from corporate. Okay. If I, if I remember correctly. The uh, the the Rock Bottom, that was the king of Prussia. I don't think I ever got to. I think I got to go there once when I could legally drink. So every time I was there, I would just get the root beer and I would leave with a pocket full of root beer barrels because they were free mm. on the way out. Oh, I forgot <laughs> about Oh, they were the great. I, I actually, because I remember them so fondly, I wound up ordering a bag of root beer barrels for my uh, my tech desk at work. Oh, it's funny. like when I'm fixing computers, people can have root beer root barrels, barrels and other other kinds of candy. And I was like, I, I cool. like root beer barrels. Um, and I also have to say, with Saucony Creek, you said Maple Mistress was your recipe. That mm-hmm. is one of the only, I guess, pumpkin season occasionals. Occasionals. It's one of the only yeah, pumpkinish occasionals. occasionals. Not even really a pumpkin beer. Yeah, that's why I said ish. Um, but it's one of those only one of the only f- non fest beer and Meritzen and Oktoberfest fall occasionals that I like. 
That was yeah, I, I, I love that beer. I have a lot sentence. of really fond memories for it. Yeah. So thank you. I for really feel effort. like, Mike, I feel like your resume should just be like a six pack. <laughs> yeah, that's like true. A maple <laughs> Mistress and a Sunday brunch. Yeah. And yeah. You're just like throwing out these beer names yeah. that you created, and they're like some of the most. They would be recognized. Like, people who pay attention to beer in this area would recognize all those beers, even if they don't recognize, you know, even the breweries that they came from. They go, oh, I've heard of that beer. Oh, I've heard of that beer. Like they're all the same guy. It's like pop songs. Like all the pop songs are written by like two people. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's I, I really appreciate you guys saying that, but I try to be modest where, where when I can. <laughs> that's fair. I'm, I'm just a man. <laughs> I do have a quick no, story. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a quick story about a night to end all dawns. Um, a, a good friend of mine that I actually met. He was he was a fan of our podcast. He messaged a bunch of us and said, "You all have to enter the raffle for a night to end all dawns, and maybe one of us will win, and we can all share the beers." So I'm like, mm-hmm. "Okay, whatever." So I entered my information and then none of us heard anything. So we thought we didn't win. And then I get this phone call from someone from Kane and they're like, yeah, you were picked in the raffle, but we think you entered your email address wrong. And here I typed it incorrectly or something. But it was nice that they readjust me. I'm like, oh, really cool. I won the beer. So then I had to pay for it, which if anyone that's bought a, a set of an attend of Dawn's, it's not cheap but rightfully so because they are delicious beers and and, it won the gold medal this year again so of course i mean they're amazing but of course everyone else that entered they're like oh you can share the beers with us but did anyone offer to give me any money (laughs) towards the cost of the bottles nope uh so i definitely controlled when and how we consumed them but um i was i felt very fortunate though to be able to um i think it was Tw- maybe the 2018 release were the ones 2017 that 2018 that might have been my antied if it was 20 let's think about this 2018 it would have been brewed in 2017 yeah that might have been me i, I can't remember off the top of my head but <laughs> well they were amazing and uh worth the cost by far but uh, my glass though may have been broken within the last couple months during quarantine oh the antique so glass that's very terrible. it's very sad but so yeah. i will have to enter the raffle again so i can get another glass at some point well you know if you'd like to i have probably about a case and a half of 2017 in my basement so if i'd known we've been talking about antique i would have shipped you guys some. <gasps> See, well Steph, you i mean think I, of these things i'm willing to drive to williamsport for beer so right now <laughs> Can I'll you give drive? you a heads up next time. Head next time I'm heading that way. Yeah, just let me know. I'm happy, happy to share the wealth. Can you drive there and then come to Philly <laughs> and drop some off? I met Dan in freaking where? Where do we meet? Lansdale. Ambler. Amb- Ambler. Ambler to give him the freaking beers. So you guys are very lucky. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Well, I, but that was not the original plan. The original plan had to change because of forces outside of our control. So. Yeah, well, I still would have had to drive to meet you. Is it would be King of Prussia, though. Yeah. I wanted to be King of Prussia anyway after that. Because he had to exchange uh, return a shirt Well, to we Primark. also went to Workhorse, but yes, I went to the mall. Who buys a shirt from Primark and returns it, though? That's my question. I exchanged like it. I exchanged it for the right size. I exchanged it for the right size. Otherwise, I was going to give it to you, but I, I was like, I'm in King of Prussia. I'm just going to go to the mall and get this. You probably spent more money in gas to go return it than I you spent on the shirt. I was going to workhorse anyway. I will always give but you a hard time. You still had to go to the mall. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like worth, it's like a mile up three dollars. It's like me. a mile up the road. <laughs> yeah, but you risk COVID. Yeah, you went in the say, mall. You went out into. A... I stayed away from people. <laughs> Trust me, I've been doing that for thirty-three years. That part I got down. Yeah, yeah that's not. Hard. Oh my goodness. So shit. Let's. Uh, we want to we we crack another beer. Oh god, I didn't even finish this. One. I don't want to chug it. Well, got, let's do the white. It's a small can. Yeah, I left some in my can, too, so there's more Pilsner here. Do you need... No, you're going to chug it. All right. One of so, the It's core. so funny we're not drinking IPA. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to have... Should we have an IPA segment that you can just talk about? No, the no. Case? I mean, I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to plug IPA at some point, but we can keep talking about, like, cool beer. Hey, there's, there's nothing wrong with IPAs. Well, you guys did just release... What was the flannel one? Flannel weather. It's a hazy double Flan- IPA. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess yeah, you need to. We can talk about I was just gonna, first. I figured we were splitting that one. Oh, we can do that. All right. Let's talk about white ale first. So, white ale is a Belgian white. It's brewed with uh, Pilsner and uh, wheat malt. So, it's like red wheat, white wheat, flake wheat. Uh, it's got orange mm-hmm. zest and coriander in the whirlpool um, to kind of provide 
a little bit of fruitiness and some spice. Uh, it's lightly hopped with crystal. It's um, fermented, obviously, on Belgian yeast. So the idea behind white ale was sort of just like a really easy drinking, crisp, no frills white ale. Like, you know, you can go to just like an every man's beer. Um, I started drinking, when I started drinking beer at like 18 or 19 when I was drinking craft beer, white ale was something that I was really interested in. Um, obviously, Blue Moon was huge at the time, but there was also, you know, lots of other imports that were coming in. And um, I was really fascinated by the expansive uh, spice flavors that I got out of it and fruit. You know, this was, I don't know, 15, 15 years ago now. No frills white ale. It's kind of my sales pitch. <laughs> Hard sales pitch on it. <laughs> no frills white ale. Yeah. It's, no, it, it, it's one of those things that, like, it's it's really non offensive. People that, you know, like white ale, like it. People that, <laughs> Hold and they, on. And people. It, and people and white people ale. Are, it's non offensive. <laughs> well, it's one of those things that, like, you know, we when we sell it at the tasting room, people that aren't into beer, the this is the beer that they're into, right? Like it's it's just the gateway beer for a lot of people. I think it's a really great uh, interpretation of the style too. I appreciate that. And uh, every everything that you describe, you get in the beer. Mm -hmm. You get the coriander. You get the citrus. Like it's it's just a good. Like, it makes me miss when this was a standard style at breweries. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things that's been of a bygone era at this point, right? I mean, if you're not making, you know, pastry stouts, milkshake IPAs, and pureed sour beers, um, you're not really a brewery anymore. But, you know, I, I miss going to a brewery and drinking a Pilsner, an Amber Ale, a Bach, a Stout, a Porter. Yeah. So. A mild, an ESB. Yeah. A Baltic yeah. Porter. Well, I mean. You know, it's it's interesting because you, you pitched it as a no-frills, um, true-to-style beer. And it's interesting that because all of these crazy pastry stouts and adjuncted beers and, and stuff have, have become the norm, that when you create a style like this that's not really around anymore, the best way to stand out is just make it to style. Whereas, yeah, like absolutely. back in the and day, when like you could find these around, you would have to add something to it to stand out. Or yeah, you know. I guess that is sort of the irony of <laughs> yeah. what the <laughs> of what beer culture has become. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I really enjoy this. Me too. Okay, so I'd like to now title this segment "The IPAs That Mike Brews." <laughs> no, is that what we're doing? We're going. We're moving into IPAs. Yes. Do we have so, one though? No, we don't have one, but I feel like we should plug them because a lot of people oh, like not. his IPAs and they are yeah. actually really good. So actually, actually, I didn't actually, 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 Steph, really actually, Steph, actually, really good. I mean, well, now if you podcast, met the guy, you wouldn't pod, think it. This podcast is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> Sorry. Are we canceled? <laughs> so that's a backhand of three of us there. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, I didn't boy. mean actually, like, <laughs> towards you. I meant actually towards the style, but whatever. I'm not explaining myself. <laughs> so you just released Flannel Weather, which I feel like is a slightly more appropriate beer to release this time of year than a beer with floaties on, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so Flannel Weather, um, we have been producing for two years. Uh, there's two iterations of it right now. There's Flannel Weather and Flannel Weather Motueka. Uh, Flannel Weather, the base beer, uh, is with the red flannel label for those that like to call it Flannel Weather Red and Flannel Weather Green. Hmm. But it's um, a New Zealand-style hazy double IPA, which pretty much means that it's a little bit drier for a hazy double. Um, it's got Nelson Sauvin and other hops from that region. I'm not exactly going to divulge too many of the, the hops that are in it, but uh, the idea behind it is to uh, give it that grapey, dank weed and citrus flavor while also providing like a really drinkable, dry, hazy double IPA. And did I see you guys just did a collaboration with the guys from Levante, right? Pointing North? Yeah, Pointing North. So Pointing North actually comes out... I don't know when the podcast comes out relative to now. Two weeks? To November 13th. November 13th. Two Friday weeks. the 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Huh. You're cursing me. Hold on. Let me pull my calendar. So that's actually when Pointing North comes out. Pointing North comes out on the 11th. 
Um, nice. Wow. So it is a meld of the two different ways that we make hazy IPA, uh, the way that Levante makes hazy IPA, and the way that we make hazy IPA, um, as far as like the the malt composition. So it's got Franco Belge and oat malt as the um, malts in it, and then it's hopped pretty aggressively with Centennial, Chinook, Strata, and Citra. So it's going to like be pretty tropical and citrusy with a really balanced, earthy dankness. I'm curious. And, and what will the can look like? The can. Is it has, going to be glittery? It is not glittery, actually. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like a combination of our two logos. So um, there's like a compass rose on it with our logo over the compass rose, which is their logo. Right. And then there's a bunch of mountains and some topo in the background, which is really on brand for us. Nice. Very cool. So, yeah. I imagine that must have been a pretty fun brew day. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, three of the guys come up, hung out, had some beers. Levante shot, is shot the, shot the shit. <laughs> always a good time. They're one yeah, of those. There, sure. There's a few breweries that we've recorded at. We've recorded with them several times over the years. Oh, yeah. And they definitely stand out as one of the ones where, like, back when we went to breweries to do the podcast, like, right, you know, this right. is going to be an epic fuck at night, like, yeah. <laughs> with these guys. So oh, the one the time. No, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm a there. banana. The one time we recorded there, Tim rolled out a uh, a flatbed. Of, no, it oh, a was a. It was a pallet. A pallet, yeah. A pallet. Of kegs. Of kegs. <laughs> it was like we're drinking And we kegs. literally drank from the pallet of kegs all oh, night. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. He comes out. Like, you guys know you guys are gonna drink all this, right? <laughs> I mean, there were like eight of us on the fucking show. Yeah, that that's night, true. But, yeah, it was oh, a lot wow. of beer, but that's fun. So it's yeah, so that uh, if you're listening to this episode fresh, that just came out a couple days ago. So go get it, scoop it up. Also, if you could go back in time and let like, I'm just curious when you're buying that beer or listening to this episode, do you know who the next president is yet? Or are we still waiting? Oh man, I'm really curious how long that's gonna take. <laughs> well. I'm gonna drink more. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just like should be everybody's slogan, everybody's campaign slogan right now. Vote yeah, and, and uh, drink and drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> democracy and who, alcohol, perfect combination. Because who knows what's, what it's gonna look like? Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Uh, but at least there will be good beers to get you through it, including including pointing north from Levante and New Trail. There's your shelf sales pitch. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so Let's talk about the cans for a second. I know yeah, that sure. the white and the lazy river pills. Are there any others that come in the twelve ounce cans? Or uh, no? and trail ale, the trail American, ale. Oh, yeah. yeah, the American amber ale that comes in a red can. If the that the white ale's blue, lazy river is yellow, trail ale's red. Um, now is the triple also a core because it has the same? It does have the same marketing on it. So triple was one of the first beers we brewed on the system i think it was like number eight or nine and when we conceptualized the original model we thought that triple was going to be what the kids used to call seasonal (laughs) and uh that that has not proven um necessarily capable we haven't been capable of keeping up with it so the idea was to essentially have this like really clean marketing where we had the boot print and then there was going to be these cans that all looked alike and you're going to be able to find Pills, trail ale, white ale, SOB, all the time uh, in the same marketing format. And then we're going to rotate in these seasonals, which is why Triple has the same sort of marketing scheme. And that never really happened. Because... And then you had the idea about the fat kid and the floaties and everything just went out the window. <laughs> well, I mean, once you once you go down the rabbit hole that is Hazy IPA, it's hard to <laughs> it's really, pretty much, it's, yeah. it's really hard to dig yourself out. Well, also talk oh. about a tough place to stand out <laughs> in the world of Hazy IPAs. There's... A lot of competition out there. Yeah, for sure. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta poke your head in there somehow. But you guys yeah, have, have sure. definitely achieved that, which is. Uh, I do appreciate cool. the twelve ounce can though, because I yeah. feel like there's a lot of breweries that are um, steering away from that, and sometimes I don't want to drink a, a tall can. Sometimes I just want, no, I'll just have, you know, just a twelve ounce. You know, it's yeah. it's not a, there's not as much guilt when you're just grabbing a small can. One more beer. It's only twelve ounces. Yeah, it's only twelve ounces. What's the harm? Yeah, but it, yeah. It, by that logic, it's only an extra four ounces to get right. To but the here's, small boy. here's the the real truth as to why the smaller can is better because you can fit more of them into a fridge. 
So you may not actually have more liquid in that fridge, but you can have more different kinds of beer in that fridge because the cans are smaller. Yeah, but, but usually you get but they're the same six. diameter. Yeah, but you well, can stack them. Stack them on top. Because uh, like our beer fridge, and this actually I'm ex- from experience, we have a little mini fridge over here where we keep a lot of our beer, and you can't stack two tall cans in there, and it's not very big, but you can stack two 12 ounces on top of each sure. other. Yeah. So you just you build yourself like a big cold box. Yeah. That's true. Then you, then you can not all of us just, just build then parts just of breweries just in our spare, to spare time. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> also, we have nowhere to put it. We barely have room for that beer fridge. That's true. <laughs> I feel like that's just a personal problem. But, yeah, I mean, alternative, alternatively, you could just like really just freeze the room out, right? So you could just store it. Oh, wherever, that's right? true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just leave the window open for the next couple of months. Yeah, it's getting exactly. cold enough. Just, we could just keep it out back. Yeah, just I'm just thinking ahead for you guys. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. yeah. No, we actually can... we have a pretty fair amount of space for beer in this house. We just have a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, up. Steph, you'll be you'll be excited to hear we are moving some more products into the twelve ounce. Can, so. mm. Nice. Are I appreciate you, are you that. able to say what will be available in twelve ounce cans? I won't speak too specifically about it, but you can expect in early twenty one for us to have more offerings in twelve ounce cans. Okay, very cool. I in like a, it in a variety of sorts. If you catch my drift. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, read between yeah. the lines. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Read between the lines. I'm trying to chug the white because I really want to open the triple. Oh my god! Mm. Are we getting are really, we... really getting wow. after it? Wow. Am I drinking too fast? Yes, a little bit. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's that Steph always drinks faster than us. That is a fact. Well, and the I remember Wayne when you and I went to see uh, the screening of Blood, Sweat, and Beers, the yeah. documentary, mm-hmm. when the um creators of it were in new york and we went to liquid hero for a beer before the screening of the documentary and i finished my entire pint and you had only consumed like an inch of yours <laughs> yeah. i remember we had a whole conversation about how fast i drink and how slow you drink uh-huh steph when were you here last i was trying to remember was it last weekend or the weekend before two weekends ago oh when were you here last that i saw you oh uh i guess I guess the last time I saw you was when you told me about Uchi. So it would have oh, been wow. last summer. Last summer. Jeez. Because we were in Denver um, July of 2019. So it would have been right before that trip. So, I mean, I've been wow. there, but that was the last time I was there that you were there. Right. Well, and now that I can get the beer here. Yeah. Why? Why come up here? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Except to visit you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I honestly saw, I just saw. needed to get out of the house and it's like fall and I'm uh, one of those people that likes to look at the leaves. I'm you like, should have te- you should have texted me or something. I saw we got tagged on Instagram. It was like two hours later. I was like, are you still here? <laughs> oh, I saw that. Yeah. Sorry. I don't yeah. like to be one of those people that's like, hey, it's me. I'm gonna be at your brewery. Yeah, but it's different if you actually know the person. Right. Yeah. Okay, true. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Next time I promise. Yeah, I would have told you that I was too busy and then just hid in the back. Okay, if you, but if fair enough. Actually, if, if you'd actually text me that you were coming fair up. Fair enough. <laughs> no, I believe you. I'll come for the Baltic Porter release. Uh-huh, right. And I'll tell you that I'm too busy and I'll hang out in the back. <laughs> so uh, Steph puts notes together for every episode that we record. And, and oh dear. we very, oh, no. very greatly appreciate that she does that. But legitimately, point F on this, uh, under the interview segment, oh, which yeah. is segment number two, is when are you going to brew another Baltic Porter? It is a I've only brought point. it up like six times know, already. But yeah. you yeah, made it a true. bullet point on the notes so you would remember to bring it up multiple yeah, I hope, times. I hope, so, I hope soon. Um, I really, truly enjoy brewing dark beer the most. I, I enjoy consuming Pilsner the most, but I think the most rewarding thing for me is to brew dark lager just because it brings me back to my roots and reminds me of being at rock bottom with Brian. And uh, I hope that I can make it happen sometime in the spring. But, you know, who knows? I have to say this triple is dangerously easy to drink. It's stupidly easy to drink. I think it's 8.6%. You, oh, won't, find, you cool. won't find it on the can, so it don't even bother with it. Yeah, yeah I noticed that on your bottles. Yeah, none of I think it's happens. really weird that you legally don't have to put the ABV on. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, yeah. until... Don't, don't, don't tread on me, Steph. Yeah. <laughs> 
un- until uh, about like 1995 or six, you weren't allowed to put the ABV on beers. Right. Yeah, it's eight point six. Eight point six. I went on yeah, on so, to look. So um, it's funny you bring it up, or who, or I might have brought it up, but the percentages on beers will be a little bit more prevalent as we go forward. As we start to do um, beers that we've done previously, you'll start to see them more and more on their cans. I um, hired a graphic designer recently, so we're able to kind of turn things a little bit more quickly in house. Nice. But a lot of the times, like when we're conceptualizing beers and brands and everything you know we're making 10 15 labels in a snapshot and calling them hazy ipas and hazy double ipas and then sort of just fitting them where where they fit because there's just so much going on so it's hard to really say that you know this one's actually going to be six and a half percent and this one's going to be five and a half and this one's going to be eight you know so a lot of times the the label is coming before the beer is yeah it's kind of a backwards way of doing things but it you know it's just how we've been able to move as quickly as we have. Well, considering the number of hats that you talked about wearing it over at the brewery there, however, you got to keep those plates spinning, you know? You got to do mm-hmm. something with it. I accept yeah. that. I accept that reason. Because I will say it's frustrating when I pick up a, I, a beer and I can't find the ABV because a lot of times I will choose based on the ABV. Like tonight, we picked up four bottles when we were up there and I'm like, I really want to drink a few of these, but they're probably pretty high in alcohol. So I'm like, let's pick the two that are lowest in alcohol, which in hindsight, that didn't fucking matter because they're all 10%. <laughs> so it didn't matter. But I was like, it's not on the damn bottle. So well, I had if to I can, look it if up. I can, if I can get on my soapbox about it for a minute, specifically with the, you know, the three of you, how long have you been drinking beer that you know that a hazy double IPA is somewhere above 8% and that a triple is above 8% and that a Pilsner is probably below 5.5%? That's a very valid point. That's a very good point. So what's the difference between drinking two IPAs versus two double IPAs? You know that if you drink two double IPAs, maybe I shouldn't drive. But if I drink two IPAs, like I'm probably okay. That's, okay, a, fair that's a fair point. I will so say though. So what's the difference between six and seven and a half percent? One and a half percent. Or it, nine it, and ten point five. Right. Is it is it two breadsticks? You know, I gotta eat an extra two <laughs> breadsticks to, to soak this up. But like, I will six. say if you're looking well, at I mean if you're looking at a menu, particularly I want at a, breadsticks. <laughs> <laughs> particularly not at a brewery, but like at a bar or a restaurant that serves craft beers and they have like a draft list, I often don't even look at the names or the styles. I look at the ABVs because I know I want usually when I first get there, like a lager, a pilsner, a hell is something along those lines. And I know they're going to be the lower numbers. So rather than reading all the names, I just look at the ABVs and it's yeah. easier to see the smaller numbers. And yeah, think, you okay, sound like my sales team. Yeah. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Well, harassing, me, harassing me about numbers. We need numbers. We need figures. Yeah. Well, no, when, so, we can't do math we with use, feelings. When we used to record on site, when we'd be setting up, they would usually say, hey, you guys want a beer a while? Mm-hmm. And we will literally say, give us whatever your lowest ABV beer is. Because mm-hmm. usually at least two of us would have to drive. So drinking before the show was usually like, oh, we probably shouldn't do that because we're going to be drinking a lot during the show. But that's right. usually what we would say. Now we just say, give us your lager. But which is usually the lowest That's true, ABV. yeah. It's usually along the same lines. Unless they have a title tricks on here. tricks on you. We're gonna come up and record here, and I'm gonna brew like a twelve percent lager. <laughs> I was just gonna say, lager. like, oh yeah, happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, hold on. Can you make an ice box, please? Oh my oh, yeah. yeah. Some, someday. <laughs> if anyone, if you know, anyone, you know, can you know, you're gonna need a different really license. To, you, you know who you really have to sell on all these ideas is Don. Oh, easy. <laughs> yeah, easy. Call yeah. him up. Yeah. I'll just message him like every hour for the, like, the next three weeks. Just tell him how much you miss Baltic Porter. He'll love yep. that. Hey tell Don. Him how much you miss hey Don. Hey Don. Hey Don. Hey Don. Specifically, yeah, yeah. I'm on it. I will well, infiltrate. All right. Well, we're talking Perfect. about Baltic Porters, and we're talking about beers that we want you to make for us. <laughs> and we're also uh, somewhere in the notes. I saw something about a barrel program. A Baltic Porter that I miss more than any other beer that is no oh. longer around is Red Thunder from Victory, which was their Baltic yeah, Porter. Yeah, me too. That was a great it beer. Aged in red wine yeah, barrels. I forgot about that beer. Yeah, I that love that is... beer. Wayne has dreams yeah. about that beer. So my, it was one of my favorite beers literally in the world. And I'm usually one of those people when I can't pick a favorite anything, but I will tell you that's definitely top five. Does this mean I need to start messaging Bill Kovaleski on the hour, yeah. too? Well, I got to ask him. We were lucky enough doing this podcast that I got to sit next to Bill Kovaleski and ask him why they don't make it anymore, which is like a very surreal moment in my life. But he told me he had some in his basement. I was going to say he invited you to his basement. <laughs> Which was a little sketch, but <laughs> <laughs> we've had a lot of people invite us to their That's basements true. doing this podcast. Uh, I don't think we've taken any of them up on that. But yet we've had people come to your basement. Yes. So is is there a barrel program that's in the works? 
Yeah, yeah. There no, is it's not part. in the it's, works. It's okay. like oh, hello. That's that's, like that's literally, literally right the there. Works. We can see it. Yeah, oh my god, at it. look at yeah. that. Yeah, that's my office. So. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hell of a view. So, what are you guys doing? Is that sours? Is that bourbon no, barrels? Is that wine? No, it's, it's all bourbon barrels. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got uh, three different beers right now in the program. I just pulled one out not so long ago uh, Moonlit, which is our Imperial Stout. Um, got pulled out two weeks ago, and they were in uh, Weller's barrels um which is a buffalo trace brand um we will be releasing those beers let me pull up the date so i can shamelessly plug it please do i also we need have to know a bottle when I need to make a of we have the a bottle of the moonlit in uh, the vanilla variant vanilla moonlit okay cool. yeah that's the one we have sweet we're releasing them i believe on the 20th november 20th november 20th and there will be five variants this year. So we're releasing uh, regular, which is barrel-aged moonlit, barrel-aged vanilla moonlit, barrel-aged raspberry moonlit, barrel-aged coconut moonlit, which will be tasting room only, as well as single barrel moonlit, which is the uh, best barrel of the bunch. That's how I'll phrase that. It's kind of so like does- the, the perfect embodiment of barrel-aged moonlit. When you say tasting room only, does that mean they'll only be available on tap? No. So the two bottles that I mentioned, coconut and single barrel, will be the only ones that will just be available here. However, eventually, sometime in the next two months, I'll say, the others will hit shelves. At some oh, point. so Ooh, they'll all be bottled, know. but some of the others will. Oh, that's exciting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're sort of testing, testing the markets there. Very nice. cool. I know, and I love how I love how you guys do the, which I assume you kind of got from your cane days. How it's all the same label, but the wax color is different depending on the variant. So that's what we used to do. Oh, that's (laughs) I like that. That's kind of I like that. I like I like that too. However, it confused a lot of people. So um, (laughs) the wax will. You had a key on the wall. How hard Uh, is it? You know, people just don't read stuff. It's just really, (laughs) really hard. It's It's just like people don't read, and I think we all can agree with that. So they used to all just have different wax colors, but the same base label. And now each of them will have a different label, but they will also each have a different wax color that will correspond with their label color. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I have a feeling I need to get out there and take a lot of money with. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds like a good idea to me. Now, do you guys (laughs) bottle... um, in like 12 ounce, 16 ounce bottles, or do you only do like bomber bottles? Cause I always see new trail in cans. So we originally did the bottles in 750 milliliters. Uh, we recently in the last year moved that to 500 milliliters. Okay. But it's I a, like the 500 because I can buy more of them. Yeah. That was kind of the idea is that like, I, I never opened 750s by myself. So, but I could open a 500 by myself. Yeah. I mean, sure. It's only 250 milliliters more. I mean, it's it's like the 12 to 16 ounces. Now, it's here's only, the thing: you have to consider oh, how much area, We're volume limelight. of your fridge that you can fill in with the bottles, depending on how you arrange them, top to bottom, bottom to top, sideways. Yeah. This is why you need the wine fridge, like I have, because then you can lay oh, you the that. bottles yeah, and yeah. you can put one this way and one this way and one this we way and one this way. Literally, just have Dan's yeah. old college fridge. Yeah, <laughs> it's like dorm. Yeah, mini fridge. we got that in a kegerator. And that a keg actually doesn't have a keg in it anymore. Yeah, my uh, my old kegerator now serves cocktails at the brewery. So. Oh, oh, nice! Tell me more about that. We've got right now. It's like an apple cider cocktail on draft and a margarita on draft. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I, I bought a gallon of, of apple cider at the grocery store last week with the full intention of at least half of it going to cocktails. Mm. So I, I'm on board with that. On draft or just? I uh, just did for... it in a jug. Okay. Pour the, the apple cider with one hand, the whiskey with the other, and call it a day. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> maybe, maybe splash a little. Oh, you got that fancy, fancy shaker. You guys can see it right here. That fancy new uh, shaker yeah. you got right there. Yeah, my my fancy new barware. There you go. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually uh, cocktails on draft. I didn't think we'd be talking about this, but now that we are, sure. How does that? Are they carbonated? How does like how does that actually like mechanically work as opposed to serving beer? Yeah, so they're in soda kegs, like homebrew kegs. Okay. And they're pushed with nitrogen, so they don't carbonate. Uh, oh, okay. So there's no actual carbonation in the final, because mm-hmm. that would be cause strange. You don't usually, well, unless it's like a soda cocktail. Yeah. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the cocktails that we do are poured over ice, so. Right. 
Oh, interesting. That's cool. Yeah. I've never had a cocktail from a tap. I don't think. I've had those like pre-made bottles, like they're cocktail in a bottle or a can, but never. I feel like we had one somewhere, maybe in Vegas. Oh, maybe we did. I mean, a lot of what happens there stays there. Of course, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I think that just could be the city slogan there. Well, it might be. It might, which is also why I our have, father's our remember. father's marriage is invalid because they, <laughs> they got married while we were out there, there so it stayed yeah. there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh boy! Well, if we could pause for a short break, I do have to use the bathroom. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> exactly. I'm surprised you're the I, first I, one. I, it's yeah. Usually one of us. Yeah, yeah. No, it's me. So. No shame. I that's may fine. take this as a pee of opportunity. A <laughs> pee. A key of opportunity. All right, I hope well, that you guys, makes it to the cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing it down. That is a phrase that I use regularly. An right. opportunity. P. Yes. Opportunity. 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 See? <gasps> I'm writing that down. All right, you're free to go to the bathroom now. <laughs> All right. Okay, we, we release you. Thanks, Dad. I just put a note in my phone for when the moonlets are being released. I may need to make a. November trip up to Williamsport. Just text me. Let me know. Okay. Seth, you want to go that Saturday? Seriously? Yeah. If it's the, wait for it, math, 21st. 21st. Okay. Hold on, guys. Let me get that date right before we. Before everybody checks their calendars. (laughs) Yeah, 20th. Yes. We'll be there the 21st. All right. Sweet. All right. We just made plans. I know. That's exciting. How about that? This is all uh, uh, under the caveat that society as we know it still exists by then. Well, that's true. Yeah. So, hold on. I feel like we should have COVID corner since that's now. I was waiting for COVID corner. I didn't know when we were going to get there. I feel like you, I I mean, I assume that you've been negatively affected by COVID, but you guys are still like pumping out beers and expanding and has all of the COVID stuff hindered your growth or are you guys still just... So it's twofold, right? So we, um, COVID definitely affected the way that we are able to sell draft beer um, because people can't pour draft beer. It's not nearly as quickly as they used to. However, people didn't stop buying beer at the grocery store. And uh, um, the beer that they weren't buying on draft pretty quickly moved towards cans. That could be sold at grocery stores, distributors, bottle shops, and things like that. So we were um, fortunate enough to have a canning line on site and um, have distribution channels in place that we were able to distribute our beer. So I wonder only grown wholesale wise during COVID. However, the tasting room has taken quite a hit. Right. And there's, uh, you know, less profit margin for the beer that goes out the door. So absolutely that has to be a yeah. consideration. Yeah. You know, but I mean, wholesale, wholesale has always been the model. I mean, Williamsport itself only has 30,000 people, you know, as compared to right. Philadelphia with 5 million people. And that's Philadelphia County, not Philadelphia and the four other counties around it. So right. I think Lycoming County itself only has, I don't know, 50, 75,000 people. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty sparsely populated up here. Yeah, it's like a different world when you go like certain parts of Pennsylvania. Like, you know, you have the metropolitan of Pittsburgh, you have Philadelphia, and then you have like a lot of suburban, and then there's just Pennsylvania. These vast swaths of, of rural area, beautiful rural area. Yeah, it's and gorgeous it's, up here. I can't say that I've lived anywhere else that's more beautiful than where yeah. I live right now. But yeah, you just got to like greatly like the, just the different ways you would have to approach any kind of business in, in the different regions. Is, um, but I wonder moving, you know, beyond COVID, hopefully, eventually, sooner than later, um, mm-hmm. you know, we've seen the impact like a lot of breweries that didn't have a distribution model, didn't have packaging or like weren't like super like that wasn't their uh, their their primary like business model. Um really had to pivot and pivot quickly and drastically adjust the way that they were getting their product to consumers. Whereas breweries like new trail that had packaging that had distribution that had um, a packaged beer presence in a lot of places had that cushion. And I wonder if moving beyond all of this as like coming in, like before COVID started, the brewery model had really shifted hard to the destination model of like breweries were prior, successful prior to COVID. Yeah. Yeah, prior to COVID, yeah. where it was like you had to have a cool tap room, 
you know, some cool food or like good food trucks. And it was more about a place people went to hang out and drink your beer rather than just the beer that you were making. And, and a lot of breweries were finding success uh, by not distributing and by being hyper local. And I wonder if on the other end of this, there's going to be a caution for new breweries where it's like, well, you better have a plan to distribute. You better have a plan to package, like just in case for some reason you can't sell on site. And I mean, I know this doesn't apply to, to new trail right now, but I'm just curious. No, your but I mean, I'll, in the I'll yes, I'll yes. And you there. Yeah. Like, I think that, um, being, having a cool tap room and, um, making good liquid is certainly really important. And also having distribution is really important, but like the lifeblood of what we do are the people who live here. Yeah. You know, are the people that come to the tasting room are the people that brew the beer here. And, um, as much as I'd love to, you know, lie to you guys and tell you that I turn every single valve here. I mean, I, I wear too many hats to do that. I've yeah. got a really fantastic team of, um, young men and women that, that do a lot of the heavy lifting here and, um, they're the lifeblood and it's the people that, you know, support the Williamsport economy and support new trail that really can help make what happens here happen. So um, I think that having a destination brewery is cool and also having a wholesale distribution-based brewery is cool, but I think being able to do both well is more important than doing one well. Yeah, no, yeah, know? that's true. Because even if you make, even if you make, you know, award-winning outstanding beer, but you're production only, it's kind of cold and corporate. Like you lose mm -hmm. that. Like part of the appeal of craft beer is that, you can walk into a brewery and you could, you know, maybe run into the brewer and talk to the brewer. Absolutely. Or, no, I, I think, you know, you know for, for me specifically, I, I make a point to be at the tasting room for probably eight to 12 hours a week, you know, whether it's we're open yeah. Wednesday through Sunday. So I try to, you know, show my face, talk to regulars, talk to, you know, people that are just passing through. I'll talk to, I'll be in on a Saturday or Sunday, but people be like, yeah, you know, the guy that, that brews the beer here used to be the tired hands or cane or wherever. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's me. Like, like, no, no, no. Fucking bullshit. I'm like, no, it's not like, <laughs> me. like, like you're, you're talking to him. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. that's cool. I think, and, that's... And, and I think, I think that's important, you know, having, yeah. having a face. It is important. And it's something that I think makes the craft beer industry. It's one of the, one of the things that makes the craft beer industry kind of unique. Um, in 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 the, not just the alcohol space but just in general and it mm. is like that's what's been lost like it's great that breweries like new trail are able to survive through this um through takeout and distribution but you do lose like if you can't physically go or if you can go but only two people can be allowed in at a time or whatever weird restrictions are going on at the moment um you do lose that you lose that personal touch and i just hope that on the other side of this that that that's still there I've places. been blessed with the opportunity to have an abundance of space. Oh yeah, that helps. So, um, you know, my occupancy is high because I've got 50,000 square feet. So I can fit as many people as I can fit in here. Um, but making it a fun and comfortable experience for everybody, you know, has to be done eloquently. So is the new programming now that we go from the bummer of COVID to the fun of a game? I think is so. How we do yeah, because we do, the, we do the the salty and then the sweet. I need to cleanse my soul a little bit here. <laughs> All right, well let's do it. Let's. Yeah. Uh, why don't we? Hold uh, on. We opened another beer. Oh, you opened it. I was gonna save it for afterwards. I didn't even. I don't even think I got to talk about triple. So. Oh yeah, we should let him talk about triple, and I then we, maybe we talk about the heliocentric stuff after the game. Didn't we talk okay. about the? Triple. We just talked about. No, it. I definitely didn't get to talk about triple because I didn't pull up the notes on Untapped. Cause... Let the man talk about the triple. The, as far as we got on triple was that the ABV was not on the can. <laughs> that's true, exactly right. True, that's true. And then exactly, yeah, then, then we went from exactly there. Yes, right. we got good right. point. All right. So, yeah. so um, triple is a uh, Belgian style triple, if you could believe it, based on the name. <laughs> uh, it's brewed with uh, Germanic malt, so it's primarily vitamin pills. There's a little bit of wheat in there. Uh, what's unique about this triple is that it's brewed with uh, both dark and light Belgian candied sugars hmm. with an extremely light hop bill. So it provides um, really uh, 
balanced sweetness is how I'll describe it. It's like sweet, but also like dry in the same sort of um, sip. It's got rich, fruity sweetness, like you're just biting into like rock candy, but also quenching like you want more. AKA it's really deceiving and you're going to drink it fast and it's going to get you drunk. Yeah. Yep, thanks, Steph. Shameless just, plug by Steph. I'm yeah. just telling the people the truth. I will say, though, uh, since we started talking about it again, I had finished up the rest of my Pilsner, but now I have another couple sips of the triple. Um, you know, we've come across a lot of Belgian triples, quads, whatever, um, that are deceptive in their alcohol content. But I think for me, if, if you've experienced Belgian beer, you know that candy sugar taste. And when you like when I get that, like I don't get the alcohol um, intensity or harshness, but I can taste that like Belgian candy sugar. And I know that that is an indicator that this is a stronger beer. So I like, I kind of trained my palate to react to that the same way I would like a, a harsh alcohol burn. But that's why I think the triple is the most deceiving of them because a quad is definitely thick and fruity and sweet and a yeah. double is definitely sweet, but a triple can, it can like, so, Triples are sneaky. So if I can go back to an earlier point, like we talked about single IPAs being between, you know, 5.8 and 7.5% and double IPAs being over 8.5 and, and Pilsners being below 5. What is the point in brewing a triple that's 12%? Right. So why not make it 8.5%? The same goes for Imperial Stout. Why make it 14%? You know, we've already, you know, I don't know, fucking Brew Dogs has already made like a 30% beer. Yeah. Like nobody's, nobody actually wants to drink that. Like they, if you want, if you actually enjoy the flavor of Imperial Stout, wouldn't you want more than four ounces of it? Don't you want eight to 10 ounces of it? Is that the one they put in the dead squirrel too? Yeah, yeah. yeah the uh, no one right wants here. to drink a beer in a dead squirrel. Well, uh, I'm dead, snake dead venom. squirrel. Dead squirrel aside, I'm not going to speak ill of those guys. I'm just saying, like, what's the point of what's the point of? We've already had the IBU wars. We've already had the ABV wars. wars. Like, yeah. why can't we just make there is, really cool beer that like you can have more than two ounces of and be like, yeah, that's a good beer. There, there's five, a point at five, which five bottle caps out of five bottle caps, <laughs> or one, not my style, but yeah. Right. Um, I don't well, like Imperial Stouts. I don't one like cap. Imperial Stouts. Yeah, it's, it's Pilsner that they say that too, so it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a point when, when you're chasing that ABV scale, you know, when you're like, oh, you, for some reason, I mean, there's people out there that want to drink, that look to the, like we were talking earlier about how we look to the low ABV beers to sort of start the night, mm -hmm. and we know that those are also going to be tend to be the lagers, the Pilsners, the Pale Ales. Um, but there is a flip side of that, and there are people, and I've come across people who just want to drink the highest ABV beer on the menu. And there is a point where you're like, why just get a Jack and Coke, dude. Like get a, get, get a, a shot of bourbon. Like if you want that much alcohol, there's liquor. Like that's not what beer is meant to be. There's a point where you, we start hitting 14, 15% might be cool as like a one-off, like special beer that like, you know, that double sure, the right, mash you know, kind of crazy thing. But for us, this triple was conceptualized as something that was going to be around relatively frequently right so i want if it was going to be on my draft list all the time or relatively frequently i wanted it to be sessionable for a high abv yeah at least within reason like yeah. within reason yeah. like you know i didn't want to like have to say like you've had three of these no you can't drink anything else like, you've had three of these how are you still talking right <laughs> yeah right i uh, i used to be all about the high abv beers and uh it was kind of my shtick for for a pretty long time but now I I stay pretty yeah. far away from those. But I think like the point I was trying to make is that your tastes in that respect haven't changed. You still appreciate a bourbon barrel aged beer and like a dark beer, but it doesn't have to be fourteen percent. Yeah, you can if, do it. Yeah, 8%. if you can do that at eight nine percent, absolutely. You know, do it's it. not about the alcohol content yeah. at that point. Like with you, it's about the the flavor. Yeah, of that. I enjoy yeah. barrel aged almost everything. Well, you also really enjoy bourbon, so <laughs> it goes hand true. in hand. Yeah. Five bottles of bourbon behind me would agree. Well, and to add to that point, it is really hard to truly experience a beer only having two, even four ounces. 
I mean, I think to truly appreciate a beer, you really need to experience a full pour of that beer, whether Mm -hmm. it's like a goblet of a Belgian beer or a pint of a lager. um, I don't think you can really appreciate a beer if you're only having a few ounces. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Hey, should we play a game? I'm gonna say, can so we can now? we do that now? now? Are we there? Is it is it called Get Off of Our Soapbox? <laughs> <laughs> we I think that's the name of our podcast now. So we don't know how to play that game. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're always yeah. on a soapbox. <laughs> We're podcasters. We have to be opinionated. Yeah, there's we got to <laughs> we got to be opinionated about something. Uh, but anyway, yes, right, let's let's, uh, let's cleanse a little bit with the, uh, a game. Well, this, here it is. Cheers, Internet. And welcome to Happy Fun Time Games. This is a podcast trivia segment that never tries to be modest. Today, we are playing everyone's favorite, the OG, the original, the quintessential, prototypical Happy Fun Time game that is libation or fabrication. Original flavor, no special gimmicks, just I tell you the name of a beer, and you have to tell me, is that a real beer, or did I just make it up? That's it. It's simple. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're going to start to my left with Dan to guess first on this one. First beer of the game. Is this real or is it fake? This is called Who Needs Pants? <laughs> we go real. Dan is saying that is a real beer. Steph, what do you think? If it's not real, I'm brewing a beer and calling it that. <laughs> so you're saying real? I'll say real. All right. Saying real. Finally, Mike, what do you think? Real or fake? You know, I'm going to say fake because they said real. All right, fair enough. That's a good strategy, and it pays off this time because it is, in fact, fake. Ooh. It is take n- the name, Mike. Take the name. <laughs> You're welcome to have it. It's happened before. Uh, it is not a real beer, but it is a perfectly valid question. Moving I'm on. I'm actually wearing pants tonight. Well, leggings. Did well, I I'm count? wearing pajama pants. Yeah, Dan and I are in pajama pants. Uh, moving on to our next beer of the game, and Steph is up to guess first on this one. This next one is called Antifreeze. Is that real or fake? Real. Steph is saying that is real, Mike. Real. Saying it's real as well. Dan, agree or disagree? I'm going to say real. Agrees. Circles get the square because it is in fact real. Yes, this was somehow approved by the state of New York, which is where you will find Greenport Harbor Brewing. So if, if I can plug Greenport... Brewing. Please That's do. My, uh, yeah, for my grandfather was it's a really cool brewery. It's out on the North Fork of Long Island. Um, really solid beer. Great IPAs. Great lagers. Just a fun place to be. They've got two locations. One's like a. They're both on Long uh, Island. I looked it up. Yeah, they're like. Yeah, yeah. So, so the North Fork is the the northernmost tip of Long Island because it kind of like comes out as a whale tail. Right, right, right. And one of them is in an old firehouse, and then the other one's a, a new location. Um, within the last four or five years. It's really cool. You should go out. Very cool. Very cool. Well, it sounds Lots like a cool place. out there. All right. Uh, sounds like a cool place. And uh, yeah, they, they made this beer. They called it... Now, it's called Anti-Dash Free. So I don't know if it's like... Because the whole thing is it's it's uh, an English-style old ale. It's, uh, I think, a, we- a winter seasonal. It might not be around anymore. Uh, they didn't list it on their website. Um, but it's meant to, you know, be something to drink in the winter, which uh, there is fairly cold. But yeah, it's called antifreeze, which is pretty funny. But they do actually bottle it and sell it uh, distribution, so they had to get that name approved to put it on a label. So somebody said that was fine. Maybe was the dash made it acceptable. I think that's what it is because it's antifreeze. Uh, but yeah, and actually, it's funny, Mike, when you when you gave your answer, I could tell that you had heard of this beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I could see I that know, in your So uh, John, the owner, and I are friends. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very cool, very cool. Well, we're moving on to our next beer of the game. And, Mike, it is your turn to guess first. Let's see if you've heard of this one. Our next beer is called Whip It Real Good. I'm going to say real. Saying that is real, Dan. I will also say real. This becomes the Agree With Mike game. Right. (laughs) Steph, what do you think? I'm going to say real, and I bet it's a hazy IPA with lactose and fruit puree in it. Whoa. Okay, okay. Everybody. Everybody's saying real. Steph venturing pretty detailed into the the style that she thinks it is. First of all, it is in fact real, so everyone is correct. It's from Four Score Beer Company, which is in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Hey! Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. We've had their Black is Beautiful on the show. There we go. This is not that beer. It is another one. Whip It Real Good is an imperial upgrade of their Whip Crack IPA. So it is double dry hopped, uh, ABVs cranked up, and uh, they whip it and whip it real good. I don't know that it's hazy. I assume it probably is 
haze adjacent, if nothing else, as most haze I- adjacent. as most IPAs now are. Um, but they didn't. I don't think they bill it as a hazy IPA. It's just an imperial. No, it's a double New England IPA. Oh, there you go. Double New England. There you go. So yes. Four Score Beer Company makes Whip It Real Good, an upgrade of their Whip Crack IPA. It is Imperial, and it is New England. Uh, I'm not going to give you a bonus point, Steph, because you went real far, and you were like milkshake fruit puree, which it is not. Well, it's called Whip It. Like- so, I mean, yeah, that's it's cool. It's, you know, like, uh, what's the Levante? Tropical Whip? Yeah. Yeah, the sort of. So I, I get where you're coming from, but you were still wrong. Moving back around the horn to Dan to guess first on our next beer, and our next beer is called Available for Takeout. Real or fake? I'm gonna say fake. Dan is saying that is fake, Steph. I don't know. That's like a really creative and timely beer name. I hope it's. I hope it's real, and I hope that, like, I would give credit to the brewery that came up with that. So you're saying real? Real. Final, final answer. All right, and finally, Mike. Oh man, I'm gonna go fake on it. Going fake, Steph oh, no. said real. She is the only one who's wrong. Because oh. it's fake. It's not real. That would be a really good beer name. Available for takeout, yes. Because that's, so like, that's like life right now. So tell me, Drew Carey, do the, are the points real and they really matter? No, the or? points are real and do really matter in this game. Oh, okay, cool. I, just to <laughs> I appreciate I just that reference. Sure. I just want to make sure. <laughs> yes. he, I guess he's aware of where he stands right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the points do matter. This is not a real, uh, not a real beer. Uh, while it does describe a lot more beers in 2020 than ever before, uh, no one, as I could find, has actually used it as a beer name. It could be a little bit confusing. But I think it would be amazing if a, a beer, if a, if a brewery, made a beer called available for takeout and only served it on draft and would not put it in crowlers or, or growlers. That's funny. So it was absolutely not available for takeout, <laughs> on-site consumption only. Sadly, it is not the case. Moving on to our penultimate beer of the game. Steph is up to guess first on this one. This next beer is called Stay the Funk In. Real or fake? Uh, I don't know. I'll say real. Steph is saying that is real, Mike. Clever. I'm going to say it's real. Clever, so it must be real. And finally, Dan. I'm going to say real. Everybody's saying real. Everybody is correct. Good showing this game. Everybody doing very well. Yes, this is from Crooked Stave, Artisan Beer Project in Denver, Colorado. Stay the Funk Inn is a spontaneous ale barrel-aged in French oak with Colorado-grown peaches. Sounds pretty good. The name is a 2020 makeover of their original Get the Funk Out beer series. <laughs> so there you go. It's only a 23-hour drive to Denver. It's only a 23-hour drive to Denver. I would love to go to we'll Denver. We'll pick you up, Mike. <laughs> I mean, I'm on, I'm on the way. Kind of on the way. That's true. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, not really, because we would take 70 from here. Yeah, but, you'd have to I go mean, a bit north, right? Like, 80 yeah. goes to Seattle, guys, so it's on the way. So let's just go to Seattle. We we'll, we'll, we'll go it. to Seattle and then to Denver. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you have to you go to. Have... I know people in Seattle. <laughs> it works. Fuck it. LA is only two days if we drive straight. Hey. Uh, I just got a notice that there's a bunch of city uh, street closers in Center City on my phone. Oh, of course. There's, there's also a curfew. You, there is, there is a curfew that starts in 20. Are you guys minutes. in Philly? Yeah, we're in South Philly. Yeah, oh, curfew okay. tonight. So since we are now approaching the last beer of the game, uh, I've got to, I'm going to recap the scores real quick so everybody knows where they stand. Def- I'm in last place and Mike's in first. That's all you need to know. That is true. Dan has a respectable four out of uh, five so far. Steph has a 3 out of 5. Not bad, but still the lowest score on the board. Mike, fucking killing it. Perfect score. Every single one right so far. Can he get the sweep? 5 out of 5. Oh. If, only something was, if only something was actually on the line like, I know. like they used to be when we could do this in person. But anyway, bragging rights for the win. Insults to the loser. Moving on to our last beer of the game. So we are going to let uh, lowest place guess last and highest place guess first. So Mike, you're up first to guess on this one. Our last beer of the game is called, tell me, is it real or is it fake? It is, cut my jeans into pieces. Now I have badass shorts. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck. That is a great name. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'm going to say real. Saying that is real. Dan, what do you think? I'm going to say fake. It sounds too good. Too good to be real. All right. We got a real. We got a fake. 
Steph, you're in last place. This is well, your chance to get. Some- I totally think I. I honestly think it's fake because it totally sounds something that you would come up with. But I have to say the opposite thing of Dan. So in hopes of not being in last place by myself. So I'm gonna say fake, but I just want you to know that I actually. No, I'm gonna say real, but I want That's you to know that I actually, actually think, think that, that it's fake, fake and you came up with it. All right, that was complicated. I appreciate you putting. Steph always strategizes the most in the game. <laughs> That's why I always lose. It's pretty impressive. Uh, you are right, wrong. Give me the score. It is fake. Ah! It's fake. Fake. Oh, Not real. Wait, I was right, but I wasn't right. You were right, but you weren't right. But also, I didn't come up with it. It's a, a meme that's apparently kind of popular. I saw it on the Beerstadt Locker House's Facebook page <laughs> when oh, I was searching amazing. for photos for the episode that just came out. They posted to me. <laughs> that, pretty, that is fucking amazing. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I wish I had come up with it. It's, Can we uh, steal it and post it on our social Funny. Media? No, I mean, you do whatever. It's a meme. That's what you do with it. So uh, that's the end of the game. Uh, snuck my way oh. in the tie for first. You did. You did. Woo! We do We do have a two-way tie for first, which we call uh, a bodacious Brazilian birthday bash. Um do five, we now? Yeah, sure. Five out of six points apiece for uh, Dan and Mike, tied for first mm-hmm. place. Coming in a little bit further behind, still with three points out of six. 50% hit rate is Steph. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> and she found the meme. <laughs> it's been spotted in the wild. Oh, well, thank you so much for playing Happy Fun Time Games. This is, of course, the part of the podcast where we... Okay, so is this like soccer? We can tie here or what? Yeah, you can tie. It doesn't really matter. Jeez. It doesn't matter. I don't have a tiebreaker. I I would have. I would have. Uh, I would have actually. I mean, if you do, you, if you really want a tiebreaker, I can pull up a tiebreaker. If you're that insistent, we can have a little runoff. Because I do. I did save a bunch of uh, other ideas for future games that I can poach for this one. If I'm I can, if I can navigate to that folder in our extensive. Google Docs. This is not. No, here it is. There we go. There's so many files in here. Oh, here we go. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to pick. Um, let's see. Hmm. All right. Here's a good one. Here's a beer. Uh, so this is uh, this is just between Mike and Dan oh, uh, to claim the win. Steph doesn't get to play anymore, which is good because she's no longer paying attention. Uh, this beer. This beer is called. I'm glad I'm not going anymore. It's totally miserable out there. I, I, I don't know. We're in uncharted territory. Who wants to guess first? You can go first. Oh, so, so gracious of you. Yeah. Real? Fake? I mean, if you want, I can just pull the trigger. No, and get no, my no, answer. no. I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to stuff it for a bit and try to strategize. <laughs> I'm going to stuff and, it. <laughs> and she's like totally not even looking at what's going on right now. So Sorry, I was being distracted by this freaking. She's in a meme hole right now. Yeah, she absolutely is. <laughs> I don't need to guess. I'm not. I'm not yeah, tired. True. None of this matters to you anymore. Right. All right. The, pod, the podcast and your viewership doesn't matter to you anymore. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Mike is one of my favorites. The funny thing is that's not even scandalous for us. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say fake. All right, Mike is saying that is a fake beer. Dan, it's I, all on the line. I was going to say fake, you too. Can, you but can that, agree and try to hold the tie, because I'm not doing another tiebreaker. Or you can disagree, and one of you will actually fucking win. God damn it, real. Dan is saying it's, it's not, real. It's not. It's real, motherfucker. Ah! Ah! <laughs> damn it. Yeah. yeah. Not only is it real, it's fairly new, and it is a collaboration beer between Burial Beer and Other Half. So oh, there you go. Well, you know, there it is. Because it wasn't actually... Because it wasn't actually part of the game, I have no further information. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Wayne Brady. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thanks. All right, now i got to get back Woo. to um, another area of our labyrinth that was, that of fun. Google Drive folders because this is, of course, as everyone knows, the part of the podcast where we shout out to our most generous patrons on Patreon. That was some good vamping. We would like to thank the following no, individuals for your financial support and like seriously keeping us going for all these years. Thank you very much to the following individuals. The first one I can see right here, her name is Dana. Don't let it piss you off. Next up is Sean Sullivan. And the can. PA Brew Review. I still want some beer out of that egg. <laughs> There's the egg. Topher Simmons. 
I would whoop Yoda's ass. <laughs> Poor Man's Brewing Company. No. Jill Chivers. Oops, okay. I just sharded. James Lamberg. You guys want a bonus beer? <laughs> Eric Dixon. Beep. Jen McDonald. Cryo hopped. Brian Mills. Oh, yeah. Ron McDonald. Baby steps. And you know him, you love him, Joe Mansell. Nine. If you want to find out how you can get on this list, as well as all the other cool stuff that comes from being a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash beerbusters. But now, the bartender. This is the part of the podcast. Yes, this is the part of the podcast where we, we play commercials. We settle the tab. Settle the tab. That's the cute name we have for it. Say, Yvonne. Uh, remember when I said I'd have to send away to NASA to calculate your bar tab? <laughs> oh, yeah. We all had a good laugh, Mo. The results came back today. <clears throat> you owe me $70 billion. If you have never seen me in person, or you've never seen a picture of me, one, you're welcome. I am jealous of you. Uh, I have glasses. And not only do I have glasses, I have recently been shopping for new glasses, and the whole process sucked. But then... Warby Parker came into play. Warby Parker is an awesome eyewear company that set out to upend the glasses market and was founded with a rebellious spirit and a lofty objective to create boutique quality, classically crafted eyewear at a revolutionary price point. Their philosophy is that prescription eyewear shouldn't cost as much as an iPhone, as much as your rent. Their prescription glasses start at $95, including the lenses, and every pair of glasses includes anti-reflective and anti-glare coating and comes with a hard case and a cleaning cloth. They make buying glasses online easy and risk-free. There are a lot of other companies out there that are cheap to buy glasses online, but you don't get to try them on. Warby Parker, however, has a home try-on program that allows you to order five pairs of frames to be shipped directly to you so you can try them on in the comfort of your own home and get as honest feedback as you possibly can out of your friends and family. You keep them for five days and then you send them back. And if you like it, you can place an order, but then you have to give them your prescription. Well, they make it even easier for that. You can give them the prescription or you can just give them the name and phone number of your eye doctor and they'll call them and get it for you. You're not a middleman anymore. You're just somebody that says, hey, I need glasses. Make it happen. When you order, most frames wind up at your door, completed with lenses within 10 business days. A lot get there sooner. Not only that, the coolest thing is you're paying it forward. For every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need. You're doing something good for somebody you don't even know. How rewarding is that? And yes, they do have prescription sunglasses too. To find out more and get your free home try-on, head on over to warbyparkertrial.com slash beerbusters. Five frames delivered to your door. You get to try them on at home, take pictures, get your friends to chime in. Warbyparkertrial.com slash beerbusters. So we have another beer. We do. Let's break it out. Heliocentric, which I'm going to be honest. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. This is Oh, now a, just getting honest? <laughs> just now. Okay. A cool. a series perhaps of yeah. like fruit centric ales That's that correct. I don't want to like but I actually like. Perfect. You're exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> okay. Why do I like these but I don't like most beers like this? Well, so it's again sort of just like a traveling back in time. Like we talked earlier about um, when breweries were doing classical styles and adding adjuncts to make them unique. And then it's sort of like the, you know, the bell curve goes high and then it goes low. I really just wanted a tart ale that I could drink because I'm not interested in drinking overly fruited, overly lactose, overly pastry, IPA, stout, blonde ale, whatever it is, or sour ale or whatever it is. Like, I, you know, I, I want I want to brew beer that people want to drink and can drink 16 ounces of. So heliocentric by nature is uh, a wheat ale that is soured in the kettle and uses uh, a respectable amount of fruits to provide complementary flavors. And I think that's probably why you like it, Steph, is that it's not... And it either. still tastes like beer? Yeah, it still tastes like beer. Um, but if you're, again, looking to enter beer and looking to enter craft beer, 
heliocentrics are really approachable beer for that. Now, the one that we are drinking is Tropical Punch, mm-hmm. yeah, which is mango and passion fruit and, and pineapple. pineapple. That's correct. Just a very pleasant uh, combination of flavors. Oh, I really, yeah. really like this. Dan was just shaking. He was literally vibrating just now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening. No, it's 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 really good. It handles the the different flavors very very well. And Steph, you're right; it does still taste like beer. Well, and this kind of beer, like you would read the label, I'm like, oh, you expect to open it and pour it, and it's yeah. like bright red or something or some like or that weird brown, like not even brown. like what's that weird color that like it's like a chalky orange brown that a lot of uh. A lot of popular beers nowadays look like if you actually pour them out of the can. But you pour it and it looks like beer. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'll play the other side on that one. Like if if I do make it with blackberry or raspberry or a fruit that has color to it, it does. It's not always blonde and semi hazy. It can be purple. It can be blue. It can be red. Yeah. But. It is approachable. It's clean. Uh, it's not offensive on either side. Yeah. You know, it sort of just plays right in the middle of sour beer. It's not puckeringly sour, but it's not not sour. One of the things I really appreciate about it, appreciate about it is um, uh, as I, I and my stomach get older, I like sour beers, but I can tolerate them less and less. Mm-hmm. And this isn't super. You don't get the stinging in your jowls. Like, it's just that little bit of tartness. You can tell you get that kettle sour yeah, it's kind of, it's character, kind of like, but it's not it's huge. kind of sour the way that, like, soda or energy, drink, energy drinks are sour. Like, right, it's yeah. citrically sour. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not totally offended by the way it makes you feel tomorrow. So heliocentric is um, a beer that I think every time I've been there, there's been some version of it available at the tap mm-hmm. room. Yeah, it's it's popular for everybody. I mean, like it's one of those beers that like we joke about. Like it quickly became a really important part of what the tasting room is because we, you know, have people come up and they're ordering a broken heels and a heliocentric, and then everybody's doing the same thing. So I have two questions about this. First, I'm curious as to what your favorite variant of this beer is. And second, I'm curious, like, when are you going to run out of ideas, unique ideas for this beer? Uh, So my for my favorite heliocentric was probably one of the earlier ones. It was the tart cherry one, but I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm partial to cherry. I like that flavor profile. Um, as far as ideas go, this is like one of the more open concepts we have going amongst our staff is just like a whiteboard of ideas that go for pastry stouts or heliocentric and whoever can come up with whatever idea I'm always open to, you know, my, my, my staff knows that, um, I am open to whatever idea, so long as you can prove that it's better than whatever we can come up with up here, you know? Nice. Like, yeah, I mean, like, to, to not, but it's open. It's not like, no, you're, that idea sucks, like, whatever. Like, we flesh every idea out and kind of look at it from all angles. So I think, like, Key Lime Pie wasn't one of mine. I think that was, I think it was my lead brewer's now wife. I think she was like, we, you should do a Key Lime Pie heliocentric it's like, oh, that's a really good idea you know like you can't go wrong with key lime pie no nah, key lime pie is a great idea we had the uh the strawberry margarita one and this uh-huh. one last time we went up this yeah, one tro- was definitely my favorite of the two tropical punch yeah yeah it's pretty divisive i'd say between the two of them people seem to really like the citrus side like key lime, strawberry margarita, or they like the other side, which is like tropical punch, pineapple mango, pineapple, mm. passion fruit. You know, it's, I don't know, it's divisive. I definitely, I, I definitely fall on this side of the spectrum. It reminds me of, there's this, this juice I get at the supermarket all the time. It's a, a pineapple, orange, coconut juice, and I love it. And my girlfriend 
is the opposite, and she had it. She wanted to try it the one day, and she said it tastes like abortions. It oh, reminds me. Oh, 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 man. My God. I, just, I just processed that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so I'm not saying your beer tastes like abortions. I'm saying. I appreciate that. In a roundabout way. Prob- that's probably oh, the nicest. Oh, my God. That's probably the nicest thing anybody has said about my beer. So, uh, New Trail, it doesn't taste like abortions. I mean, that's a plus. Holy fuck. Um,. So it reminds me of to shift subject. <laughs> yeah, we recover from that. Please do. It reminds me of the. Uh, you guys have Wegmans, obviously, down there. It reminds yeah. me of the club soda at Wegmans, the orange pineapple Wegmans, or the uh, orange pineapple club soda from Wegmans. Is that? Are you talking about like the seltzer cans? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've had I that one. Yeah, I, I do had like their seltzers, but I don't think I've had that one. It's like a yellow and orange box. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend it. Interesting. Might have to I don't often to get to Wegmans. I do but buy a lot I of. Do. <laughs> but when I do, I do buy a lot of seltzers though. But I only yeah. I, their certain. ginger seltzer is the best. I've had that one. I do like that. I one. drink it. I have a case behind my desk at work. Yeah, you're a liar. I am not a liar. I had a can today at lunch. No, I'm, t- I'm telling you that you're a liar. That that's the best one. Oh well, I have uh, not had this one. The one you are I speaking of yet. So the, they have a dragon fruit one. I think dragon fruit's pretty good. That one's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I guess I need to expand my Wegman Seltzer Horizons. They've got a bunch of them. As they somebody do. Somebody that has recently got into a lot of tequila. <laughs> I'm very much into the club sodas that Wegmans has because they drink tequila and club soda a lot right now. Right. Interesting. So. Okay. Before we wrap up the episode proper, this is the part of the podcast I'd like to call. I'm going to make Jan- Dan fucking jealous. Perfect. We just opened up a bottle of the Barrel Age Sticky. Yeah. Oh, this nice. is fucking amazing. To the loser, they're spoils. <laughs> <laughs> See, the problem so is, it the, is the loser it, came it, with the spoils before she lost. I mean, I, I'm the one that drove to Williamsport, so whatever. Dan, close fair. your ears. It's an imperial milk porter conditioned on coffee, maple syrup, vanilla, and spices. And holy fuck, it is amazing. Can I formally and it's request? the perfect temperature right now, too. Dan has a request. And it's I'm also formal. waving to. Well, I mean, the request is going to be for the guy who just took his headphones off. Morgan's my girlfriend. She's also the taste of your manager. And Hi, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. I like your hoodie. It's a whole that isn't. Or is it a whole costume? Oh, uh-huh. oh, oh it's, it's so cute. Nice, nice, very nice. I want it. It's a kid's one. <laughs> That's fair. You down at the bottom. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Nice, nice. Okay. It's like capri length. I mean, my skeleton ends at my knees, so it's <laughs> anatomically correct. <laughs> anatomically correct. I mean, my thighs. Aww. Aww. <laughs> he, he took his headphones off. You can hear it's all go, aww. <laughs> Love stinks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I would like to make a formal request that when uh, when when we visit in three weeks, that uh, I I can get a bottle of that. Okay. Is there are yeah. there bottles left? Like, is that reasonable? Do you think there'll be yeah, some? That's reasonable. Left in a There's weeks? probably right. some laying around. All right, cool. It's so, so freaking good, Dan. Yeah. So sticky, <clears throat> sticky's um the base beer. We just released that last week. I want to say it's a milk porter. It's it might sound very familiar to you. It's a milk porter brewed with coffee, cinnamon, and vanilla. Um, we released it for the first time last. I want to say November, but I had conceptualized the beer many years before. And um, when I got to New Trail, I pretty much just put it straight into barrels. And then we um, took that out in 2019 and bottled it. And that's what you're enjoying right now. So mm. I'm glad you enjoy it. I'm so jealous. It would, yeah. th- there's one thing that could make this beer even better than it already is. Okay. Hit me. Chili peppers. <sighs> that's uh... like the one thing I won't ever do. So oh, we've oh. reached an impasse. Steph. Oh shit! You've just moved down like ten spots on my list. Listen, That's fine. You I'm moved sh- up ten on in my list. 
It's probably so I, it's fine the way it is because it is. Gotcha. Wait for it. Wait for it. So sticky. And then. So sticky. There you go. To be yes. clear, that was his idea, not mine. <laughs> but it would be even better with, with chili, chili peppers. peppers. I'm just saying. Yeah, so I suffer from um, acid and GI reflux. So peppers are not in my diet. So they just never became a part of what I drink. So I need to put my own peppers in your beer is what you're saying. Uh, you can do whatever you like. Just don't tell me about it. <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> You've got a Randall, right, Steph? I do. That's yes, right. You do have a Randall, don't you? Does I anybody mean, do Randalls anymore? Bottle. Whatever happened to Randalls? No, but according to uh, uh, Kevin Keller, people French press their beer now with different shit. Yeah, that's all a Randall really is. Let's. Be I mean, honest. I guess, but it's cooler. But who really listens to Kevin Keller is the question. <laughs> we certainly fucking don't. I'm just fucking kidding. I love <laughs> Kevin Keller. I just really? like to. I just like to bust his balls. It is fun to bust his balls. Yes. Yeah, I'm going with jizz. <laughs> In case you That's missed it. the sound clip of Kevin Keller you go to? Yeah. Well, I got three. I already played Nailed It, but I don't think you guys would have heard that. But there's also... Deal. I did. This is the best. Yeah, I'm going with Jizz. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> with Jizz. Speaking of sound clips and people that are on the episode, when was the last time Mark Graves was in the episode? Oh. It's, it's, it's been a while. We tried to get him on recently, uh, and he... But he got married. He was getting like, married. Yeah, he was kind of cryptic and like didn't yeah. respond to things. And then it turned out that like the day we recorded, he got married. Oh, good for him. Yeah. I haven't talked to him in a while. Yeah, I don't. We did. Uh, let's see. He was on first with Maniunk and yeah. second with um, Flying Fish. The, the, whichever fish is in New Jersey. Flying Fish. And then twice at Cape May. So the last Cape May was when we had Beardy Guy. What was his name? Brian. Mark Brian. Graves. No, I know. <laughs> The other guy. <laughs> other beardy gusher. guy. Uh-huh. Brian. Mark. I think his name is Brian. His name Brian. Is Brian. Yeah, like the creative ideas guy or whatever. He had a cool title. Yeah. It was something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mark Craig. The pickles. Oh, my God. But we hung out with Mark. Was that after the last time we recorded with him? When we did the trip to the Jug Handle Inn? Yes. Oh, we it was the trip workers. that I was not invited this to. The trip that Steph wasn't on. She was very pissed. Um. Yeah, I love Mark. I miss Mark. We'd like I'd like to have him back on. It smells like betrayal. That's one of his best quotes. No, the best one is. Well, of course it is. Great. Amazing. Amazing. That's right. <laughs> and late tits. We, yeah, late tits. So we used to we used late to tits. say that all the Mark, Evan, and I used to say that all the time. Those two phrases all the time to each other. <laughs> Amazing, and it, this was way before he was on the podcast. Yeah, please isolate that and put it on the soundboard. Yeah. Uh, his version of amazing. Yes, yeah. yeah. my interpretation. Lit tits, lit tits. Uh, that's, that's the in, literally that's in, the best. That's thing. in reference to Lititz, Pennsylvania, which it has is. like one of the coolest bars I've ever been to. Which bar? Bullshead? Bullshead. Oh, bulls. Yeah. Is that really uh-huh. a question? I, I know, right? you were going to say it, but I, I don't know. Latitz is also, uh, yes, I'm going to say it that way. Latitz uh, is also home to a distillery very nice. that uh, is very fond uh, in my heart and liver. Uh, Stolen yeah. Wolf. Oh, that's right. They are in Latitz. Yeah. I think when Mark, Evan, and I were saying Latitz all the time, Borat might have like still been relevant. Before it's relevant right now. The, the relevant. Last it's, yeah, it's, it's obviously very relevant right now. But, but the like, last time like, it was relevant. The last time that we like really said those things to each other might have been when it was really relevant. Like for the first time. Whenever wow. I go to edit the the episode in Logic, I go to the file that has all the um, all the commercials. Yeah. And then I go back because I know we need another sound effect that's in a different folder, but it's on this weird autoplay setting. So every time I go back to the other folder, the first thing that it comes across is a file of you saying my wife, my so wife. Every time, every time I edit, I always forget it's there. And then it pops up and I just can't stop laughing. My wife, my wife. <laughs> nice. Huh. No, I have a very important question. What's that? Mike, when oh. you, uh, when you and uh, Mark Graves were, you know, super close and 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 had your beer time together, nickname. which nickname yeah. did you use for Mark? Was it That's a good question? I, I have a guess. Jeez, is this a trick question? I don't even know. No, I am legit curious because He's I know Mark lot. has like seven thousand nicknames. Oh man, I don't. 
That I would so think. Long ago. I probably just called him Mark because I was. What about oh, pickles? Yeah, pickles. pickles. I was thinking I ne- pickles. I never called him pickles. He hated it. He never liked to. Be <laughs> That's called why pickles. I call him pickles. Yeah, no, but like as a guy that was coming in, because Mark's like one of the nicest human beings I think I've ever met. In my yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. That That's a fact. That's yes. true. And someone that was coming in to like. Evan had been like sort of managing him and the guy that was brewing there at the time that left to go to Iron Hill had left and I'm coming in like as this intermediate intermediary role. Mark was like just washing kegs and doing whatever at Maniac and just like trying to get a foothold for himself. So I like really respected him because like I knew he wanted to be somebody and obviously he's somebody now and he does like really well for himself. But like calling him pickles was like really degrading. So I don't think I ever really called him pickles. You have to ask him if I ever called him pickles. I, I really don't. I don't. He's just he was too nice yeah. of a guy to like. Yeah. So Mike is essentially chastising us and telling us we're all assholes because we always call. No, him... no, 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 no. No, we don't call him pickles. <laughs> no, we though. call him we, slimy, we call sauce. slimy sauce. He's in. Yeah, my... but that, that's far more endearing because like you guys right. have known him as he's climbed the ladder. Like I remember him before. Like this would have been an option for yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like he would have met like if he was fucking washing kegs at Maniunk and you guys came to interview somebody at Maniunk, you guys would have been like, yeah, we'll talk to the head brewery. Who are you? The guy that washes kegs? Like, yeah, fucking pickles. Go wash some more. Yeah, yeah wash, some pe- pickles. wash some kegs, pickles. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's in my phone as Sweetums and I don't know why. Oh, Sweetums. I have no idea why. I, you know what? That's a perfectly appropriate name for him. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Wasn't he? Like, when we recorded at Love City, was that wasn't he around? Did we? Why would he have been at Love City? I, I mean, think we perfect. like he was it's perfect that him and Kevin were together at Love City, but wasn't I feel like when we were there, didn't we see him that day somehow? I don't think so. Or did we? No, we went there. We went to Love City with him the day we hung out, and it was before we ever recorded at Love City. We just yes. went to Love City to hang yeah. out, and then we ended up back in New Jersey later in the day. That's what happened. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to ask him if I ever called him pickles, but I that does I'm, not... I'm asking him right now. I'm say, should Are we you? call him? Can we can we add him in? I can I can call him on the iPad if you want. I'll call him. Oh my god. We'll see if he picks up my phone call. I mean, if anybody's gonna I call him, still, I hope he still has the same phone number. I mean, if Dan calls him from the iPad, we can all hear him over the. Hello, John. Hey. Oh, I hear him. Tell him. To... Are you? Mark. Uh... Yeah, Mark. I'm on. Uh, I'm on Beer Busters right now. I'm on the podcast. <laughs> I, I've been wait, waiting wait, you wait, on wait, the wait. podcast let's, with me. Let's let's do it a different way. I'll call Mark. I'll call you from the iPad. That way you're you're coming through the soundboard. All okay. right, Mark, you're getting called from the iPad. Whatever that means. <laughs> the iPad. Steve, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve Jobs is calling you. <laughs> He's not going to answer now. Now he knows what's going yeah, on. Yeah, right. You've ruined it. He's trying to live a quiet life. Oh my god. I'm telling you, he's not going to answer. This is going to be the best episode ever. Yeah, this Hello, should just be last call. Oh, my God. He oh, actually he answered. answered. We were we were taking bets on if you were going to answer. <laughs> All right, Mark. So Hi. they they Hello. asked me if I had called you by Hello? any nickname. I couldn't remember why I would have called you any nickname. And then they reminded me that, that you used to be called Pickles. I don't ever remember calling you Pickles, but I remember Evan saying it all the time. Because I really remember Hello? that you hated Uh-oh. that name. I don't know if he can hear you. Wait, Mark, Hello? can you hear us? Hello? Hello? Yes. Hey. Hey. Can he hear? He, he probably can't hear me or Mike. K- did you hear that? I heard you saying, could you hear that? But you, you <laughs> didn't hear <laughs> Steph. Oh, no. Dan, I think you need to nope. uh, relay our conversation. <laughs> oh, there. man. Oh. This is the going. bummer that happens when you do the podcast on Zoom. So we were talking about your your many many nicknames, Mark, uh, and we were oh no, <laughs> we were wondering if you can recall any times that Mike might have called you pickles. Uh, yes. Oh, oh. he called you out. No. Oh dear. Oh, really? He's not happy about that. Oh, man. No, God. He's, I don't he's, ever remember calling him pickles. You he, need to tell Mark that Mike claims he doesn't remember. I believe this. he helped give Evan inspiration for the nickname. <gasps> oh, oh, he even inspired oh, the nickname. Oh. Wow. Wow. No, I don't remember that. You know, now that things have gotten this controversial, I think it's actually good that you can't hear Mike. 
<laughs> because he is making protestations right Quick, now. Quick, let's let's call him on Zoom and get him in the this way everybody oh can hear. Oh I mean, we don't necessarily. Wait, is that the four thirty local bus backing up? <laughs> no, I don't remember that. Oh my god. Oh shit! That's fine. We don't need to bring we don't need to bring Mark into the Zoom call. Yeah, I know. We've interrupted his quiet. I know. Evening. I know. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> we feel so bad, but also like it's no, been a while. No, you gotta ask him why. How did how did I give how did I give inspiration Uh-oh. to that name? Oh, I, I don't know if you can hear that, but he's asking. Mike's asking how he gave inspiration for that name. Um, I don't know. He doesn't know. Well, you can't make such a bold claim that he gave the inspiration and then not have the evidence to back it up. You know how it goes. Just an innocent man at a bar eating pickles during lunch, and then suddenly his nickname's Pickles. <laughs> Just a guy sitting at a bar eating pickles huh. asking you to give me a nickname. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I think that was an Evan nickname, but I don't ever remember calling him Pickles. He doesn't remember calling you Pickles. Uh-oh. This is a uh, weird, like, well, tell him that I say. Yeah, it's so strange. And tell him that I say. <laughs> I feel bad for having you hang up tell uh, on speaker. Tell him sp- I love him. Tell him phone. I love him. He's shouting. Aww. Mike is shouting that he loves you, Mark. Aw. Hope all is well. Good to hear from you, Mike. Aw. Well, I did send Mark the Zoom link in case he wants to crash the party. Okay. Right. If if you wanted to crash the party, that's the best way to do it so everybody can hear you because apparently my technology has failed. Well, he can't hear what I'm saying, so you need to tell him that. <laughs> oh, shit. Good point. Sure, if you guys want me to. <laughs> yeah, uh, she sent you the Zoom link. Uh, feel free to jump on it if you are not fed up with our shenanigans. We are ready to go on to last okay. calls. So. We are about to do last call, so that would be appropriate. Yeah. yeah we are kind of at the end of the episode. so and uh, It would cool. be fabulous. All right. I'm okay. trying to make edit notes okay. in my mind. And I might have to take an opportunity to pee. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I have to take an opportunity to pee, too. So are we going to do that All before right. or after last call? <laughs> During. Wait, do you have to pee again? Me? Of course. <laughs> okay, bye. We're, discuss- Everybody has we're discussing pee. Bye, Mark. We love you. Goodbye, Mark. We love you. Well, like, let's okay, wrap bye. this up. Leave so if uh, anyone wants to learn more about New Trail, they are New Trail Brewing pretty much on every social media platform. Um, and their website, which I didn't type, is probably NewTrailBrewing.com, I'm going to assume. And if you'd like merchandise, you should go to New Trail Brewing Outpost. And they have really freaking cute uh, merch. And I almost bought the sweatshirt with like the wildflowers on, but instead we bought a fuck ton of beer. And I was like, I probably shouldn't buy a sweatshirt. That sweatshirt just actually came back into stock. So I may need to actually buy that when we come back up in a couple of weeks because that sweatshirt is really freaking cute. About a thousand different types of hats, sweatshirts. T-shirts, whatever you're looking for. It's fabulous. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. And if you are a patron, you're going to listen to Slimy Sauce. And if you're not a patron, you should give us a dollar so that you can listen to Slimy Sauce and Mike argue about whether or not Mike called them pickles. Yes, definitely do that. Uh, remember, Twitter, Instagram, at Beer Busters, Facebook, Beer Busters Podcast, patreon.com slash Beer Busters. And there's also beerbusterspodcast.com slash shop. Uh, get yourself a, a, a cool mask and, and protect yourself from the Rona while, uh, while, while wearing one of Wayne's designs. But and on- definitely come up to New Trail on November. Wait till the 21st. 21st. Come up when we're going to be there. Yes. Um, but these barrel-aged beers that the, uh, Mike and the crew up there are pumping out are freaking delicious. And we're so lucky to have a brewery for those of us that are here in Pennsylvania that's doing this stuff. Uh, if you're listening to the episode Fresh, um, the collab with Levante just hit, uh, the world this week. So if you're into hazies, which that's okay, go grab that too. And I'm Wayne and I'm taking an opportunity pee. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, unfortunately this does bring us to the end of another episode oh, of beer busters. <laughs> and yes, like Steph said, get yourself the new trail. And, uh, and try these beers, man. Every beer that we've had tonight was great. We know they're uh, they're setting the internet on fire with uh, how how the, the the kids love these beers. And I can't wait to get out there and uh, and try the release that is coming up at the middle ish end of November. Well, Mike, thank you so much, man. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, my name is Dan Baker. I am joined by my co-host and brewologist Steph Hefner, and the guy that just returned from the bathroom, Wayne Baker. That's where I'm going to go next. Thank you so much for listening. You all are the best out there. No squids were harmed in the making of this episode. We'll see you next time. I knew that I could go to the bathroom and come back, and the episode would still not be over. Well, you knew you yeah, had at least 53 I already, I already seconds. I signed off for you, Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty good.